Welcome to our community. Susie Thomas with you this morning. Always a pleasure to welcome Max Barton from the Canton Museum of Art. Good morning. Good morning. Always excitement happening at the Museum of Art. And for somebody who's never been there, I think they will be stunned when they walk in the door. Talk to me about it. Usually, yes. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of great exhibitions coming up this season. Um, I know we're starting off, uh, uh, I know right now we're in the middle of August and, and we're setting up for exhibits to come. So August 30th, with an opening of September 6th, uh, starts our uh, photographs along the Underground Railroad mm. uh, exhibition. So it's rare that the museum does a photography exhibition, but this promises to be pretty interesting as it as it tracks the, uh, the pathway uh, to freedom from the south through Ohio and across into Canada. So I, th- I don't think many people realize the pivotal role that Ohio played mm-hmm. uh, along the Underground Railroad, which is billed as the first civil rights movement yes. uh, in this country. And it's, uh, it's a fascinating look, and there's some companion exhibits that we've created for it, that uh, uh, one of which being uh, Ohio, the shortest path to freedom. So kind of focusing on what our history is here in this area uh, on uh, the Underground Railroad topic. And then... Mm, cool. Coming up uh, in our f- fall winter uh, exhibition series, we're, we're featuring a, a ceramics exhibit from it's a compilation of several artists, uh, female artists who are mothers. It's called Crowns: The Journey to Motherhood, Ooh. and it looks at at, at how uh, a woman's life changes, uh, and a, a woman as an artist, and how her art changes, uh, moving from being not a mother to being a mother, and what all that brings about uh, uh, in in terms of your life and your art. So, and how motherhood changes from uh, stage to stage as well. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Very, very so cool. all, all of this is portrayed within the different artists' ceramic creations. And mm. it promises to be interesting, informative, and fun at the same time. Mm-hmm. So When does that begin? That begins in uh, November. It'll open right after Thanksgiving. Oh, right nice. after Thanksgiving. So uh, it, people with family in town, we, we try to open up right after the holiday yes. uh, for that fall-winter exhibit series. So when we're talking about ceramics, we're not talking about sculptures, right? Uh, it, or, or are we? Well, what we are, we are talking about sculptures. Okay. Uh, large, uh, some large size, uh, some not so large. But yeah, we're mm-hmm. talking about different figure, figures and forms and, and other things that uh, uh, people can take away uh, their own meaning to. That will be so, unique, and it's, and how it's that because you're not talking about paintings about motherhood. This is com- something completely this different. Is different, and it's coming from. Um, I believe it has three different tour stops that it's making from museums that have requested it, and we were one that wanted to to have it here as something something unique, something different. Uh, you know, part of our job is to expose uh, uh, the community and our visitors to different forms of art, uh, while of course keeping to our tradition of of Mm -hmm. American works of art. Let me stop you right there, because I think some folks might not be familiar with the fact that Kent Museum of Art has done some coups through the years with uh, your leadership as far as bringing in some some exhibits that aren't anywhere else or might be touring and aren't just displaying anywhere. So you can see them here, but better come and see them because you might not catch them just anywhere. How do you do that? Right. It's a, well, it's a, it, it's a, it's a task to create an, an exhibit. And I know one of the ones that we've talked about over the years has been, uh, um, it was in 2016, I believe, and it was uh, called Dream Worlds, the Art of Imaginative Realism. Yes. And, you know, what does that mean? Well, you know, we look at uh, all the things that we see on TV and all the things we see on screen, uh, even our small screens. Uh, you know those 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 games, those science fiction fantasy shows. They're all created in the background by artists, whether it be computer generated or even sometimes before it's computer generated, it's done on on a sketchbook or a storyboard. Um, and we featured that exhibit here with artists from all around the country. Uh, actually curated, guest curated by our, our one of our own uh, um, community residents and artist, Chris Seaman. Mm-hmm. And it was that show was received tremendously. Oh yes. Uh, and and I think it, it surprised traditional museum goers uh, because they thought I don't want to look at science fiction art. But when when you get in there and see the artwork that's created for yeah. for um, uh, shows like Game of Thrones, which we featured, and shows uh, like Lord of the Rings and other, th- it uh, it does fascinate you as to the amount of talent that it takes to create um, all the things that that we look at every day. So the, the football themed one was amazing <clears throat> too. Scrimmage was an amazing show, and that mm. was we put that together 
uh, with a museum uh, from out in Colorado. Uh, when that toured here during the enshrinement uh, in 2017, uh, it was uh, it was very well received, very well received, and I remember Jerry Jones walking through that year, and <laughs> and and it was actually the first time the museum has had an exhibit up during the enshrinement dinner because most people come to the museum and to the cultural center, uh, and they don't realize it's a museum because there's no art on the walls. Well, this time we were able to schedule that exhibit with the help of of, of uh, um, the Pro Football Hall of Fame Enshrinement Festival from the chamber, uh, gracious enough to. Uh, relocate some tables and things. So we had uh, three of uh, our larger galleries open. We could install the exhibit and allow everybody coming to that dinner and to all the events to be a part of the scrimmage exhibit. Right. And Jerry Jones walks through and says, this should tour to every NFL city in yeah. the country. Yeah. So I said, well, Make it happen. <laughs> right. So, That's right. But you had to see it here. But you had to see it. But it, it takes a while to put those things together. Uh, and it's wow. a, Tip of the hat. I'm we're, just saying. Uh, we know we're pla- I think uh, if uh, people have read, maybe read in the paper or heard, we are planning uh, and working on uh, right now assembling a, uh, a very traditional museum show, but one that has not been done here for quite some time, and one that's never been done in a Midwestern venue, uh, which is a focus on uh, American Impressionism, uh, which is coming in... In 2020, 2021. So wow. be the winter, winter exhibit uh, from November through March. Uh, it's a major arts event uh, supported by Visit Canton and with the support of all of our, uh, our other six sister arts organizations, uh, Voices of Canton, the Palace Theater, the Players Guild, Canton Ballet, Canton Symphony, Maslin Museum. Um, but we're the focal point and we're assembling uh, from private collections and from Ohio museum collections and some outside of Ohio, but uh, uh, primarily watercolors, but uh, works of American Impressionism that many people have not seen before. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I will, I will say that the works coming from private collections are what's going to be a, a nice uh, draw for cultural tourism, because there are pieces that I know that I've seen that h- hang in people's hallways uh, that have never come out and, and been seen. And wow. we're getting loans of these items. Uh, and, they're, and they'll be part of it. It represents a huge, huge range of names in American art. And that will be amazing. It will be fantastic. Yeah. It will be fantastic. Amazing. Uh, jumping back to the, the uh, sculptures and the uh, ceramics, as far as motherhood, uh, you made me think of your gift shop. Will there be ceramic type things available for sale from local artists in the gift shop during some of those there, things? We, usually we try to theme... Um, Theme the gift shop uh, uh, to what uh, is inside the galleries, which so is the boutique. There'll be something there, the artisan boutique. Artisan yes. boutique. Yes. Uh, so we will uh, we'll we'll see what we find from uh, our our local artistic community because uh, usually there's really just some great great works. Very very cool. Well, yeah. I didn't want to throw you off schedule. No, no, no. Tell me what else is coming up. Oh well, ending ending this season, which will be uh, April uh, through July of 2020, we have a a major retrospective show of. Uh, um, Artist Merv Corning. Merv had his uh, show here in 1989, and uh, it was entitled Game Day. Uh, and Merv was, uh, at that time, uh, the official artist of the NFL and an official artist of the Super Bowl. So he has done a lot of watercolors, and uh, primarily watercolors, and works uh, uh, portraying the sport of football. Huh. Um, his, uh, his estate contacted us in 2017 and, and wanted to make Merv's... Uh, uh, artworks uh, reside here at the Canton Museum of Art because Merv really enjoyed uh, his time here. Uh, so both be exhibiting part of the and collection? they are, they are actually already are. We have a gift of uh, wow. three hundred different pieces. Um, and I told Joe Horgan, uh, now the former executive director at the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame, and he used to get a he used to get one Merv Corning gift every year from uh, uh, Merv's widow, Tula right. Corning, and I, I did call Merv after after we had had signed our agreement and said, "Joe, you're not you're." Or, Joe Horgan said, "Joe, you're not going to be getting anything anymore." So <laughs> that was okay with him because Merv's, yeah. Merv's work is such fine artwork; it's it's tremendous, mm-hmm. and it, it's it goes beyond just the sport of football. It's uh, beautiful architectural works, uh, beautiful landscapes. He was a tremendous portrayer of World War One aviation, um, and then we just received an, another gift uh, uh, from an owner of a piece, but. Merv's Merv's widow Tula actually she wanted the piece to come to the museum and it's a beautiful watercolor uh, of um, uh, John Glenn 
Uh, mm. And it was slated to go as a gift to the Smithsonian, but it came here to Canton. Here instead. So, yes. This is so, what I'm saying. This is tremendous. Top so the, drawer. The collection is really wonderful. I'm very proud of it. And it's it's something that, like I say, I'm, I'm just a caretaker of the collection, as are all of us at the museum. The, the work belongs to the people, belongs to the city. So... There are a lot of collaborations between the art world and the football world in Canton that seem to be that rising tide that lifts all boats. How do you do that? When you're talking about this most recent and the scrimmage exhibit, how does that relationship work? Um, you know, it, it's not it's not something that's certainly that's that's forced. It's it, just because we live in um, Hall of Fame City doesn't mean we're always going to have something that relates to football or partners uh, to football. But uh, in, in the case of the Merv Corning exhibit, uh, it's it it fits well and it's uh, it hasn't been done before, so it's a, it's a major retrospective show. But it, again, it, it covers other areas besides football. But we I, during that show uh, um, next spring, we will have I, I will have Joe Horgan back to talk about the link nice. between art and football because mm-hmm. that's something that he and I talk about a great deal. And yeah, there's a there's a lot of collaboration here, and and we see it. I see it. In one of my one of my favorite events is. Um, uh, touchdowns and tutus uh, created and Absolutely. presented by my my friend Ashley Bettison. It's yes. a, it's a, it's an amazing event that puts high school football players together with dancers from Canton Ballet as as a fundraiser. And that I mean it's it is a it is a tremendous community event, and it shows you know very well what what the the linkage is between the arts and and education and mm-hmm. even sports you know mm-hmm. many 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 football players use ballet as a form of strength training and so that you know that's a that's a tremendous link well, we see uh you know the Canton Symphony does uh, uh, a lot of work i believe with the pro football hall of fame mm-hmm. on some of their uh, maybe uh, I think summer serenades. I can't be totally sure, but uh, no, there's a great linkage uh, throughout, and I don't think it, you know, none of us try to force it. But we want to we want to capitalize on the strength of of each other uh, and mm-hmm. and collaborate as much as we can. Well, when we're talking about the development of the whole person and a whole child, you've got to have all of that. You've got to have. You do. They need that art education. We don't want to ever see that cut from a curriculum. No, they need no. that. Art pull art down. inspires. Art art strengthens communities. It sustains communities. Mm-hmm. People move into communities because of. That's the right. arts. They don't, they don't come here uh, and, and want to drive to Cleveland uh, to, to see anything. I mean, they, they, they certainly will, but they're not gonna, they, they don't want to move to Canton and not be around things that are related to the arts. And I think our, our arts district uh, that's growing, our, our museum, all of our arts groups, uh, we all do tremendous work. I'm, I'm mm-hmm. proud of all of us. So. Yeah, and you know, those first Fridays, you, you just got to go and just see what is there. Absolutely. Just go through that whole arts district. And apparently you don't have to travel far when something is the decision, do I put it in the Canton Museum of Art or do I put it in the Smithsonian? Hmm. And uh, well, that's, the again, Canton that's Museum that, of Art is where a, it will live. a lovely gift. And I know when, when we were first talking about getting Merv Corning's collection, it was between the Los Angeles County Museum of Art and here. And they chose here because <laughs> this was Merv's. Yeah. Favorite place. This is where he felt uh, um, that his art spoke to the community uh, and not just the football art. It was everything else as well. Absolutely. You mentioned the permanent collection. Give us a, a an hors d'oeuvre, a taste of what we might find when uh, when you pull things from the permanent collection for display. Oh, you, well, I mean, you find all sorts of things. And we we, we just recently closed a, a, a second version of our salon-style show, which is something you don't normally find in an American museum. Um, you might find it at, at the Met. You might find it at the Boston uh, Museum of Fine Arts. Um, but uh, it, it is a, a way of hanging that's really, it's, it's Parisian style. It's European style of uh, pieces, one on top of the other, uh, going all the way up the wall. But we did it that way because we pulled about 250 paintings from uh, – one area of storage because mm. we just uh, inst- installed a brand new storage racking system. It was about a $300,000 project um, to replace the racks that had been at the museum for 50 years. So since mm. the cultural center was was built and the museum moved in uh, and the storage racks needed to be replaced. And so thanks to the generosity of many of our local foundations, uh, we were able to, to fund that project and protect those amazing works that belong to all of us, wow. and you know, some of those include pieces by um, impressionist John Singer Sargent, and one of the most amazing watercolorists uh, ever. Um, Alice Shilley here from Ohio, also one of the most amazing female watercolorists 
ever. Mm. Uh, and there's a large show at the Columbus Museum of Art that's currently open, uh, featuring all uh, a wide range of Alice Shelley works, which I would say if you can make the trip down, make the trip down to Columbus, it's well worth it. Because one of our pieces from our collection is in that show. They borrowed. Yeah. So, yes, we all borrow back and forth. So, <laughs> nice. uh, yeah, so you know, our, our, our collection is uh, um, Edward Hopper. Uh, you know, people are just shocked when they, they are able to come and look and say, wow, Canton has a Warhol, or Canton has right. an Edward Hopper, really? Canton has a Wyeth? Re- yes, so we have a lot of wonderful American artists. And that, that's the distinction that is the Canton Museum of Art. We showcase American works of art. Uh, we can we look at primarily watercolor when we can, um, and that's what the collection is made up of. Um, but uh, it will always be American works of art. So we will not find a Monet exhibit here. Uh, a, it's too expensive, but B, not American. Not American. Uh, so, but again, we do things like the uh, American Impressionism show coming mm-hmm. up, uh, which is being worked on. Uh, one of our contributing uh, um, writers for that and a, a contributing curator for that is Dr. Bill Robinson, who is the senior curator of European paintings and sculpture at the Cleveland Museum of Art. And he did uh, one of his, his last large shows was the uh, Water Lilies. Uh, Monet water lilies. So, sure. but he is a tremendous expert on American impressionism. So, when you get collaboration like that, you can really uh, um, kick it up a notch. So. Mighty impressive. We're visiting with Max Barton from the Canton Museum of Art. We'll be back after these words. You're listening to our community.